the 150 millimeter Santa Cruz Bronson and its unruly twin sister, the Juliana Rubion, were in their element in southwest Utah. With an updated linkage and modernized geometry, the new version of this bike is more like the Nomad than ever, possibly sacrificing some of its versatility, but adding to the brawl factor. So, version three of the Santa Cruz Bronson. Radically redesigned, it has uh, the sort of linkage that we first saw in the Nomad last year that was inspired by the V10, Santa Cruz's downhill bike. I, I kept going back and describing this bike as like a, like a trail brawler. Because it's a 150 mil travel bike, right? Yeah. 150, 160. It feels like it's got, I mean, it has good pedaling, mm -hmm. but it also has like a very linear feeling suspension. So like, you really want to plow it into stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I feel like it really does prefer descending. However, like it, you know, the more gas you give it, the more efficient it sort of becomes. Yeah, we talked about how we felt better climbing on it uh, out of the saddle versus sitting. Yeah, yeah, when you sprint, it like, you can feel that chain tension just keeping the suspension from bobbing and it just, it surges forward pretty well. Mm -hmm. But I think that comes with a little bit of a drawback on the climbs. As the chain is tensioning the suspension, it can't, you know, uh, move with the terrain and soak up all the little ledgy stuff. And so you wind up breaking traction more than you would on some other designs, like, you know, maybe like a DW Link uh, has that sort of hover bike effect where it just reads through the terrain really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely line. noticed some shortcomings on the ledgier climbs. So it has a fairly slack head tube, um, which I felt uh, made it feel less easy to pop over rocks um, on the way up. It, uh, it felt like it really wanted that front wheel to stay on the ground, which can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your style of riding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to say too many bad things about like climbing on this bike though. I was perfectly happy and comfortable to go uphill on this bike. I felt like it was pretty efficient and like sea tubes reasonably steep and I was in a comfortable position and felt like I could just motor along. Like I didn't feel like I was on an inefficient like big enduro bike on the climbs. Descending, I got this really great like sense of security on the bike where um, I just felt like I could take it into anything and it was confident like the frame is stiff and like responsive and just like it just feels burly. Mm -hmm. It's also like the frame is it feels really well thought out and they covered all their bases design wise so it's really quiet. So like a lot of bikes, you know, they've got the capability to like plow through things, but there's all this noise happening and you kind of feel like you're breaking the bike. Yeah, it's, but it's distracting. Like something's gonna fall yeah, off. Yeah, <laughs> but this is like so quiet and it's just there and stiff that you feel like you can you can just sort of and I feel handle like that's, it through things. I feel like that's consistent of most Santa Cruz bikes. I feel like they're really well put together and snug and stiff. And um, that's something that this bike has as well. VPP is Santa Cruz's signature suspension system. And the new linkage creates a straighter leverage curve. Still, some testers thought it fell short on seated climbs, especially with its newly slackened geometry, but it makes for consistent and confidence-inspiring descending. So I've ridden a Bronson or a Rubion for many years. I love this bike because it's a great um, do-everything bike. Like, you can take it on big, long trail days, or you can go into the bike park. Um, it's sort of the sort of bike that will make you uh, want to try bigger and bigger things because it gives yeah. you that confidence to just like throw it off of things and you yeah. know it's going to track well when you land you know it's going to be consistent and uh, I think that's something that this bike definitely still excels in. Mm -hmm. Yeah I, I, I do agree and it gave me this really good level of confidence but the for some reason my, my rub is like I did like the linear feel of the suspension but I did feel like off bigger drops and things I was going through it quicker yeah, what'd you say, um, the mid-stroke wasn't as supportive yeah, as you Yeah, it thought. sort of felt like the mid-stroke support. I mean, yeah. like, if you go on their website and check it out, it says, oh, we've got more mid-stroke support than ever with this new uh, linkage with a new, sh like, shock placement and stuff. And I think that's true based on their previous stuff. But br based on other bikes I've ridden, I feel like it's just, it's not as supportive as, as I want. I do like those, like, progressive, poppy-feeling bikes, and this isn't necessarily one of them. I don't feel like it makes it it's more plowy. Like not playful. It, yeah, it is kind of plowy, but it it is like you, I mean the bike is light enough and fun enough to be able to like do stuff with. So it's not like super ground huggy, and I think that's where that happy medium is with this bike. I, I feel like it's pretty hard to compare to others. Yeah, and I do think it, you're right. It does have sort of a linear feel. I personally just didn't mind it. I think I was sort of looking for that sort of sensation on this bike. Yeah. I also spend a lot of time on an Evil Insurgent, which is a pretty linear feeling bike that's similar to this. So. I was, I was ready for it. Yeah. 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 
Can we talk about the shock placement for just a second? Because I that was like one of the first thing I noticed when setting up this bike is it's really hard to check the sag because the stanchion is like inside the linkage. Um, yeah. And we talked about how that could be problematic depending on how much you fool with that stuff. Yeah, yes. it's, it's kind of a funny little detail. Like on a bike that seems to have all the other little details so covered, like there's even a shuttle pad on the down tube. It's funny that it's so hard to see what your sag rate is. I do love the uh, fork spec on this bike though, that Fox Grip 2 damper on the 36 is like so insanely uh, good. Like it, I, I can't believe how much it outshines the, the Fit 4 damper. Uh, like it's so sensitive and so responsive and adjustable. It's got excellent range. I just love that fork. Mm -hmm. I do I do want to make a note about the 36 though um, for smaller riders like me that have like less mass to throw around the front of the bike. Um, those bigger stanchions can feel like a lot to muscle around. And I kind of wonder if that wasn't part of my issue with picking it up over step ups and like the more technical climbs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we had a pretty nice build. This is an $8,200 bike um, and it had the Santa Cruz reserve wheels upgrade, which they're nice carbon wheels that Santa Cruz makes in house. Um, I really like the ride feel and I've ridden a couple pairs and they, they hold up pretty well in my experience. Yeah, yeah. didn't you bottom one out Oh, I pretty smashed one horribly. so hard on the test loop <laughs> today. It was that one rock after the that was the square edge one. Oh, I know the one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next to the cactus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's worth noting that the Juliana version of this bike, the Rubion, um, is the same spec and price as the Bronson. The only difference is the seat, the grips, the shock tune, and the sizing range. So it comes from an extra small to a medium. It doesn't go to a large. Right. Yeah. Which is a bummer because I really like that colorway <laughs> and I couldn't get one. I'm a size large. <laughs> <laughs> A true trail bruiser built to last. The Bronson and Rubian will inspire you to step up your game. The tricked out carbon version we rode retails for a whopping 9,800 bucks, but you can get into this bike for 35 at its lowest spec and with an alloy frame. To read the full review and to see how the other contenders in this Bible bike test stacked up, head over to bikemag.com.